Hello everyone and welcome to Milestone Health with me, Dr. Mokera J. Nyamache. I am a family physician and public health expert. I am also a mental health enthusiast and an ardent supporter of all things wellness. Our vision at Milestone Support and Wellness Center is a world where everyone thrives from one milestone to the next and achieves their full potential due to good health. Today, I will take you through tips for good mental health. Feel free to type your comments or questions in the chat box and I will be happy to respond at the end of this presentation. By the end of this webinar, I hope we will all have an understanding of how to achieve and maintain good health. Before I start my presentation today, I would like us to watch a small video on the global and Kenyan statistics of mental health and its importance. You all know that there is no health without mental health. More than 264 million people suffer from depression globally, and this increases the risk of suicide by a whole 20%. One person commits suicide every 40 seconds somewhere in our world. You or someone you know has experienced frustration and poor mental health which affected development, daily activities, relationships, or physical health. Imagine a world where there were no mental health problems. A world where progressing from one milestone to another was not hindered by depression, anxiety, panic attacks, or post-traumatic stress disorder. Imagine if you and everyone you know experienced compassion, and empowerment through all life's milestones. A world where stress was a driver to ascend to higher heights and success, not a source of frustration and poor health. This session is really for us to share if time allows and to brainstorm on the tips that we can use to achieve good mental health. And as we go along, I'd like us to ask ourselves, how do we make good mental health a reality in our day-to-day -day lives? All of us have, you know, demanding jobs. Our businesses are equally demanding. There is politics. We have a lot of social issues going on. There are so many threats, a lot of uncertainties. We're hearing a lot of traumatizing stories almost every day when we, you know, when we listen to news or read newspapers. And at the end of the day, we still need to remain sober and make good decisions. So I, I want us to just think about that as we go along. How do we achieve it? It is said that there is no health without mental health. I want to give a little bit of background to this statement. So Dr. Brooke Chisholm was the first director general of the World Health Organization. He was also a family physician and a mental health practitioner. And he was tasked with coming up with the definition for health, which he did. And uh, actually, it's the same definition that we are using to date. So this is how he defined health. It is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. As I said, this definition has stood the test of time. And you can see he was a scholar, so it was well-researched, well-thought, and well-founded. Therefore, the truth that there is no health without mental health was well-informed and established long ago. Today, what we do as health experts, actually, is just to remind each other and remind everyone else this important truth. As I proceed with the presentation, I would like to... Just a remind us again to make use of the chat box. Kindly type in any questions, any thoughts, any comments, you know, around this area. You can even give suggestions on what you'd like us to talk more about. And at the end of the presentation, um, I'm going to respond to all of them. For those that I will not respond, I will endeavor to do a recording of responses and share with participants. Why does mental health matter? Now, poor mental health is a source of diseases, particularly non-communicable diseases. More than 90% of diseases are stress-related based on recent research, and that is why it matters. The relationship is correlational. That means 
that one leads to the other and vice versa. As you can see in the image, you know, a vicious cycle is quickly created if things are left unattended when it comes to mental health. You can see poor mental health leads to physiological problems. By physiological problems, I mean alteration of the body's normal functions. For example, changes in hormonal balance, um, disturbances in sleep, appetite changes. So once those disturbances start happening, then we start experiencing physical problems, which will be picked in the form of things like high blood pressure, inability to sleep well or insomnia, eating too much leading to obesity, or eating too little, which leads to anorexia or starvation. And the interesting thing is, once the physical problems start to be experienced, they automatically cause us to feel more stressed. And so the cycle continues. Once we are more stressed, then we get even more physiological problems. In turn, we get more physical problems and it goes on and on. So eventually, we get diseases like diabetes, hypertension, triggers of um, some autoimmune diseases, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction to anything, be it substances, uh, be it uh, going to the casino, gambling. It predisposes us to things like gender-based violence. And all these things, actually, they keep piling on top of each other unless a solution is found quickly. So then who is responsible for mental health? I'd like everybody to think about that. We have individuals. As a person, you're responsible for your mental health. Families, we have a responsibility to each play our role in the family to ensure mental health. Societies and communities, for example, professional bodies, religious bodies, different sectors. All of us play a role in mental health. So it is the responsibility of everyone. Integration of mental health into all decisions that we make, into all policies that we draw, into all programs that we build and projects that we do, actually would go a long way in promoting wellness across our different populations. This means that whenever we sit down to, you know, make policies or design interventions, it will be important to consider the mental health effects and, you know, look at how to ensure good status is upheld as much as possible for ourselves and also for others, both in the present and also in the future. So how do we achieve mental health? So on that slide, uh, you will notice very many things. I want us to start with self-care. Self-care means putting your physical and mental health first. This will put you in the best shape to make decisions and execute your duties. You can achieve self-care by, one, simply getting adequate good quality sleep. Target at least seven hours of undisturbed sleep daily. Check things like your quality of bed, or mattress to avoid unnecessary physical discomfort, which will cause muscle and bone or joint problems. Avoid screen time and gadgets when going to bed. Wind down at least half an hour before to put your mind at ease and ready to sleep. Finally, block out the noise as much as possible. Another thing we can do to achieve self-care is diet. Observing good diet. How do we do that? Eat at least three balanced meals a day. Avoid skipping meals because this affects your metabolism. Choose healthy snacks, for example, fruits, nuts, whole grains. Hydrate well, at least two to three liters a day of clean drinking water, fresh fruit juices, soups. Stop smoking, reduce or stop alcohol. Stop any psychoactive substances unless medically prescribed. Have dinner as a light meal at least one hour before you wind down to sleep. Another thing you can do towards self-care is physical exercise. Target at least 30 minutes a day of physical exercise that you can tolerate at least five days of the week. Challenge yourself to sweat when you exercise as this means 
that your cardiovascular system is also challenged to pump blood to all organs at the optimum rate and levels. Another thing you could do is to interact with the external environment. Simply step out into nature every few hours and enjoy the sun and fresh air as you take deep breaths. Interact with other people, talk, laugh, be human, enjoy, celebrate with the celebrating as it said, mourn with the mourning. Finally, set and manage your boundaries. Establish standards of how you would like to be treated by yourself and by others. Let others around you know what is acceptable or not acceptable to you. Be deliberate about maintaining your standards and boundaries and make sure that you respect other people's standards and boundaries as well. Now let's look at the second thing you can do to achieve mental health wellness. That is being self-aware. Questions like, what are you capable of? What are your limits? Why are you where you are? Why are you doing what you're doing? Where would you like to focus your energies? What changes do you need to make? Can you make those changes? How can you make those changes? This is just some of the questions that you can ask yourself just to see how much in touch you are with your own self. You need to be deliberately in touch with your physical, emotional, spiritual, and psychological status in order for you to achieve self-awareness. Next, let's talk about work-life balance as another way to achieve good mental health. We all must work in one way or the other. And there are very many several components to achieving work-life balance. The first component is ensuring that your physical health is at its best. You do this by taking care of yourself and complying to medical advice. Secondly, you have your intellectual health. You need to maintain curiosity, have a learning culture, be creative, challenge yourself to stay up to date. Your emotional health also makes a big difference in your work-life balance. Intentionally manage your stress levels, stay on top of your work, seek help when you need it, speak to your therapist or doctor freely whenever you feel overwhelmed. Another component of work-life balance is our spiritual health. Take time to develop and understand beliefs, values, and ethics guiding your personal life. Let this be like a compass to you. The fifth aspect of work-life balance is financial health. And how do you achieve financial health? Well, you need to manage your budget. Try to live within your means as much as possible and plan for the future as much as you can. Next is practicing environmental health. Take care of your personal surroundings. Declutter, manage waste, stay organized. And finally, we have our social health. And here we are talking about having a strong social network that gives you support and guidance when you feel stressed. Intentionally build those relationships. Bond with your dear ones. Check your relationships to ensure they remain healthy and mutually beneficial. Reach out and support others whenever you need to. As well, accept support when it's extended to you. Now, another important thing that we can do towards achieving our mental wellness is knowing and practicing our circles of control, influence, and concern. Well, our circle of control is really where we're most comfortable at. We can do anything in this space and we don't have any fears. But we can also step beyond that circle when we want to grow. And that is when we stretch ourselves into the circle of influence. There's a lot we can do, but it's a little bit uncomfortable. It's not what we are used to. But by deliberately doing it, we actually grow. Then finally, we have the circle of concern, which is really where things that are beyond our control lie. So it's important, as we said, uh, for us to be self-aware so that we are able to tell in which circle are we operating. 
what belongs to the circle of control or to the circle of influence so that we can keep and continue cultivating and nurturing in order to grow and what is really in the circle of influence so that we do not spend a lot of energy on things that might not give us the results that we hope for or anticipate simply because there is really nothing we can do about them. And so here I'd like to challenge us, you know, to go beyond our comfort zone. Just stretch yourself so that you'll be able to grow. But as you do it, you need to be careful. Do not go beyond your breaking point. And again, just to reiterate, that's why self-awareness is extremely important. Now let's look at something else that we can do to achieve good mental health. Actively pursuing mental wellness speaking to your therapist. You see, your therapist's office is a safe space where you can confidentially talk about your thoughts, emotions, and anything else without feeling judged. There is no stigma in your therapist's office. A session with your therapist helps, you know, offload things from your chest. And many times you gain other perspectives as you keep talking, listening, and reflecting. The therapist helps to guide you to your own tailored solutions through various methods. Now, you need to think about seeking psychotherapy just the same way you would think to see your physician or your personal doctor or visiting the laboratory when you feel unwell or just for a checkup. The way we go for annual checkups is the same way we need to deliberately um, reach out to the therapists and talk to them. Another thing that's very important about, um, I mean, under actively pursuing mental wellness is participation in debriefing sessions. Now, what is debriefing? You know, simply put, it's just an opportunity to vent. Venting with like-minded people by pouring out experiences and realizing you're not the only one going through things in life. It helps you to see that someone else may have an idea that can help you just as much as someone else could be going through the same or different experience like you. Debriefing sessions actually make you feel at ease because they allow you to be vulnerable with your peers as a means of building strength. And you can even invite, you know, a health expert to the sessions for discussion of issues and provision of health perspectives on matters discussed where necessary. Finally, in order for you to achieve good mental health, you need to take time out whenever you need it. Again, this brings us back to our earlier slide where we said we need to be self-aware. You need to know when you need to stretch yourself and to what limit. So then, in conclusion, there's someone who said that the only safe ship in a storm is leadership. Each and every one of us is a leader. In our own ways, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, we are leaders. The world is currently going through multiple storms and all of us are directly or indirectly affected. Leadership is a demanding position. Because it requires you to lead yourself. It requires you to lead family. It requires you to lead colleagues or people at work. The list can go on and on. But the reality is that leadership is a demanding position. You must be deliberate in ensuring that you can rise to the occasion as a leader. And how will you achieve this? Well, your mental wellness is at the core of this readiness. Now I'd like us to go into the discussion. Um, I'm going to go through the comments and the questions in the chat box. You can also put up your hand if you'd like to share anything and unmute yourself and just share freely. And finally, if you enjoyed this webinar, I'd like to request that you, know, you like and share the content and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you.